So I've been asked if I could give my view, my opinion on the trending story surrounding singer, writer, Brian McKnight. Welcome back, y'all. My view, my opinion. Let's take a listen to the recent Instagram video where Brian was in his vehicle doing what he does at least once a week where he takes one of his fans or followers comments and he screenshots it up in the right hand corner and he makes a video responding to that comment. So take a listen to what he had to say. So lastly this week, I want to big up my man right here. See, he gets it. In order to live a life that you love, you have to get rid of the evil and the negativity, even if that evil and negativity is related. We want everyone to live a life that you love. Our hashtag, that's what it means. Hashtag I love our life. But in order to do that, you have to get rid of all that evil and negativity. There's so many angry and upset and negative people out there. We want to use our platform as a place of positivity, a positivity platform. So hopefully... I mean, who knows, next week, maybe I'll only respond to positive comments. We'll see. We'll see you next week. All right. And basically what the fan had said was the fan agreed. He agreed with Brian's decision to kind of wash his hands of his adult children. Now, people in the public, uh, you know, square, they have taken sides. Some people are saying that he's terrible. Uh, Some people are accusing him of having a new family. Therefore, he's not you know, he doesn't care anything about his other children. Now, uh, people are saying he's wrong. You've got people quoting Bible scriptures at Brian McKnight saying, you know, all kinds of things. And then you have people like his fan who support him and say, listen, we understand that sometimes the relationship is so fractured that you truly have to be done in order to preserve your own sanity and peace of mind. So what do I think about this? Well, A lot of you know that because of my work experience, when it comes to these family situations, I really am cautious because when there's a whole lot you don't know, it's really difficult to really give what I like to call pure commentary, right? What I know from experience is that if a parent makes the decision to totally wash their hands of their adult child, that decision is a result of years of accumulation of really bad experiences with that particular adult child. And so the parent feels like it's best for their mental health, sometimes their physical health, to just be done. And I've also seen the opposite, where adult children, you know, They just said, I can't, I cannot deal with my mom, my dad, or my parents anymore. In order for me to live a life of peace, I have to be done with them. You know, uh, my blood pressure is out of whack. You know, I keep getting these migraines. Anytime we get together, there's always fighting. There's this, there's that. I can't, they're control. And so I've seen this on both ends. So some of you haven't had a lot of experience outside of your own family relationships or that of your spouse or that of your friends. And so you may feel like he's wrong for that. You may believe that it's wrong for a parent to say, I'm done. But I can tell you from 18 years of experience, seeing all kinds of families, literally all kinds, racial, ethnic, uh, religious belief systems, It really depends on what led them to the decision, whether the decision is wrong or right. And without knowing all of that, we don't know. We can't say whether he's wrong or right. I know what we want to say because of the way it looks and the way we feel. But we have to understand that that's just what all that is, looks and feelings. And that's hard for a lot of us. You know, with very limited experience, I find that a lot of us, tend to think we know a whole lot. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like we talked about this with the Umar conversation, people who now they give out mental health and psychological diagnoses. They're not mental health practitioners. They haven't studied not one day. They don't have any experience in the mental health field, but all of a sudden they can identify a narcissist in a crowd. You see, that's that's really, uh, as a Christian, what the Bible calls being a fool. 
and I didn't want to be a fool anymore. So I started a few, I think it was last year or maybe it was year before last. Maybe it was during COVID, but I started weaning myself off of that kind of stuff because I realized just how foolish that was. And I've sat down with hundreds of people, but I know I am not a mental health practitioner. I don't know what a real narcissist is. Oh, I can tick off a list, a checklist who anybody, any of us can do that. But it's not wise. It's not healthy to do those things. You know, you have to have real training to be able to identify a lot of these mental health, these psychological conditions that we tend to think we can name on a dime. And so at any rate, so I can just tell you that I can't say that Brian was wrong or right because I don't know what led to the decision. I just know From experience, it was an accumulation, but an accumulation of what? I would need to see what those experiences were. But what I do know also is this. Sometimes all of us have this movie theater idea of family relationships. What do I mean? And everybody lived happily ever after. And so we tend to think happily ever after looks only one way. You know, I've been on both sides of this. I've advised Parents to be done with their adult children. Wash your hands of them. What did you say? You're on. You're, you're about to have your third heart attack. Wash your hands. But I've also advised adult children to wash their hands of their adult parents. You're saying that every time you leave their house, you are so torn down to where you have to now embark on this months long journey of trying to rebuild yourself back up from the inside out. It's time to be done. Because the relationship is just that dysfunctional where it's destroying your health, your physical health, your mental health, your emotional, your spiritual, right? You can't even parent your own children well because you're so, you know, all this back and forth. And even that, you know, before you advise that, you have to really take into account so many things. So at the end of the day, sometimes Happily ever after looks like you go your way and I go my way and us never to meet again. Yes, even if we're blood relatives. But at the end of the day, I don't really know what to make of this because this has been going on publicly for a long time, which, as I said earlier, means it's been going on even longer privately. And, you know, some people will say, well, it's a sad situation. Well, it may look sad on the surface, but then again, we go back to what does happily ever after looks look like? You know, sure. I mean, all of us can say that parents and children should be able to get along. But I'm going to tell you something like we talked about with um, sibling rivalries. What's the root of ninety nine point nine percent of all sibling rivalries? It starts with mom, dad or both. Well, what's the root of terrible relationships between adult children and a parent. It goes back to the parent and that other parent not getting along, whatever. And now the children are just carrying the torch because we learned from Ryan himself and his children that when he, when they were younger, he was there for them. He provided for them. He was there for them emotionally, even after he and that girl broke up, he and the wife broke up. So we can't say that he wasn't a good father to them. What we can say is that when they became adults and he began to pull back the purse strings, all of a sudden, well, what's natural and normal, the whining and the complaining started. The stealing, remember one of them stole? I mean, the complaint, all that stuff started. Well, that's kind of what happens when you spoil a child and and now they're an adult and they're used to being spoiled. And now you're saying, I'm not going to spoil you anymore. I want you to actually grow up and be an adult. Well, there's a whole lot of fit, fit throwing that happens there. So at the end of the day, a lot of us wish this weren't happening, but this actually is happening in families all around the world where now that um, people are grown, they're just not getting along. And again, I say sometimes y'all, even though we wish it weren't so, sometimes the best thing for people's physical, spiritual, mental health is just to be done. I used to say this to parents when I would had a situation where I had to advise a parent or parents to wash their hands of their adult children, because more often than not, it was like affecting their health. And it's like, okay, are you going to let this kill you? Okay. 
All right. Because I mean, either if you're telling me the doctor has said, change the way you're relating to this person or you're going to die. Well, you just got to change the way you're relating. And so what I used to say is your love doesn't have to change, but your allegiance has to change. You're now, your allegiance is now to your own well-being. When it comes to Brian McKnight, his allegiance is to his new family. And that pisses off a lot of people, especially women. Just like, but if it were reversed, her allegiance is now to her new family. Your love doesn't change for your children, but your allegiance now changes. Meaning they're now first, your new family, your new wife, your new kids, your new husband, your new kids. They're now first. Your allegiance is now to them. Your provision is now to them. Everybody else is secondary when it comes to allegiance, not love, but allegiance. But there are some people, they want your allegiance to remain with them, even if you have a new life. And see, it takes a whole lot of emotional maturity to understand my allegiance now has to be to what, whoever and whatever my responsibility is now. So I used to say that all the time because I found like I found that really helped people understand the principle and the concept. Your love will never change. You're going to always love them, but your allegiance must change now because of X, Y, and Z. You know, if you're saying that you can't even keep food down because of this back and forth and this dysfunctional, it's time for your allegiance to change. Your allegiance now has to be to your own health and well-being. And that may mean you have to let go of trying to have a relationship with this child. Or like I said, if it were vice versa, and I was talking to the adult child, to your parent. So familiar relationships are just really complicated. When they're dysfunctional, they become extremely complicated, excuse me. And we really have to be on the inside and have a little bit more information to to really discuss, I think, this um, in, in in a healthier way. So those are my thoughts. Leave yours below. Bye, guys.